remains of what looks like organic material, preserved on ice since, well, who knows when, maybe even the beginning of the solar system. Say a comet like this crashed into the young Earth billions of years ago. Maybe it delivered organic material and water, the raw ingredients of life. It may have even sown the seeds of life on Earth that evolved into you and me. But say it crashed into the Earth now. Think of the dinosaurs wiped out by a comet or asteroid strike. It's only a question of time. Eventually, one day, unless we can find a way to protect ourselves, we'll go the way of the dinosaurs. The Earth is safe. For now. But if life on Earth was obliterated, we'd be stuck out here, homeless, adrift in a hostile universe we'd need to find another home. Among the millions, billions of planets, there must be one that's not too hot, not too cold, with air, sunlight, water, where, like Goldilocks, we could comfortably live. The red planet. Unmistakably, Mars. For centuries, we've looked to Mars for company, for signs of life. Somewhere down there could be extraterrestrial life. But are we ready to find it? Ready to rewrite the history books, to tear up the science books, to turn our world upside down? What happens next? could change everything. More than any other planet, Mars captures our imagination. Think of sci-fi films, comics, what follows? Martians. It's all just fiction, right? But what if there really is something here? If there is, it's living on a dead planet. The processes that make Earth habitable shut down hundreds of millions of years ago here. Red and dead, Mars is a giant fossil. Something's alive. A dust devil, a big one. Bigger than the biggest tornadoes back on Earth. There's wind here, and where there's wind, there's air. Air that could sustain extraterrestrial life. But it's too thin for us to breathe, full of choking carbon dioxide. There's nothing to protect Mars from the sun's ultraviolet rays. And it's cold, as low as minus 80 degrees freezing water in the ground, at the poles, and even in the atmosphere, as snow. It's hard to believe anything could live here. But on Earth, there are creatures that survive in extreme cold, heat, and even in the deepest ocean trenches. It's as though life is a virus. It adapts, spreads. Maybe we're carrying the virus of life across the universe right now. Even in the most extreme conditions, life usually finds a way. But on a dead planet, with no geological activity to replenish the minerals and nutrients in its soil, no heat to melt its frozen water, and all this dust, it's hard to see where we're going. ancient volcano, three times higher than Everest.
so wide, it would stretch almost all the way across Spain. Since its discovery in the 1970s, it's been declared extinct. It looks like there's something happening on its slopes. It's as though lava has been flowing. But any lava flows should be long dead, obliterated by meteorite impacts. Unless this monster isn't dead after all. If it's not, there could be molten magma beneath the crust right now. This changes everything. Volcanic activity could be melting frozen water in the soil, recycling minerals and nutrients, creating conditions for life to exist. This makes the Grand Canyon look like a crack in the pavement. It goes on and on. So far, it would stretch all the way across North America. But look, signs of activity, erosion, and what looks like dried up riverbeds on the canyon floor. Maybe volcanic activity melted ice in the soil, sending water flowing through this vast canyon. Activity that we now know could still be melting ice, creating water. And where there's water, there could be life. If we can find running water, there's a chance we could find living creatures. Trundling across this desolate landscape, the NASA rover Opportunity. It's finding evidence that these barren plains were once ancient lakes or oceans that could have harbored life. orbiting Mars pass over them, they keep spotting new ones. More proof that Mars is alive and kicking. That there may be water flowing beneath the surface, creating these gullies. Water which could be sustaining Martian life. Now all we have to do is find it. Unless we've already found it, not on Mars, but on Earth. There's one theory that has life starting here before moving to Earth. The idea is that an asteroid impact blasted fragments of Mars, complete with tiny microbes, out into space and onto the young Earth, where they sowed the seeds of life itself. No wonder we find Mars fascinating. It could be our ancestral home. If it's true, it means we're all Martians. The Mars we thought we knew is gone. Replaced by this new, active, changing planet. And if we don't know Mars, possibly the solar system's most studied planet, what else don't we know? There must be other secrets out there, waiting to be discovered. This is getting scary. It's like being inside a giant computer game. But these are all too real. Asteroids, some of them hundreds of kilometers wide. This one must be about 30 kilometers long. And look, perched on it, space probe. Can't have been easy parking on an asteroid traveling at 80,000 kilometers an hour. It's a lot of effort to investigate some rubble. Rubble that regularly collides 
breaking up and raining down on Earth as meteorites. Magical tokens, supernatural omens, and more than that. Turns out it was rubble like this that came together to make the planets, including our own. So by dating the meteorites we find on Earth, we know the planets were born four and a half billion years ago. These are the birth certificates of our solar system, of our planet. But for some reason, these rocks didn't form into a planet. Something must have stopped them. Something powerful. Jupiter. What a monster. At least a thousand times bigger than Earth. So vast, you could fit all the other planets inside it. Something this big is going to have a major effect on its neighbors. Its gravity is stopping the asteroids from forming a planet. And just look at it. It's stunning. But up close, maybe things aren't quite what they seem. This huge planet is almost all gas. Land here, and we'd sink through its layers, maybe never hitting a solid surface. And Jupiter's good looks, the product of extreme violence. It's spinning at a huge rate, whipping up winds to hundreds of kilometers an hour, contorting the clouds into stripes, eddies, whirlpools. And this, the legendary Great Red Spot. The biggest, most violent storm in the solar system. At least three times the size of Earth. It's been raging for over 300 years. All those churning clouds have sparked an electrical storm. Just one bolt is 10,000 times more intense than any at home. It seems the best place, the safest place to see Jupiter, is from a distance. That's just beautiful, dancing around the poles like the aurora back home. But the Geiger counter is going wild. It seems even these are deadly, generated by lethal radiation pulled from space by Jupiter's powerful magnetic field. We're beginning to realize out here, nothing is what it seems. The universe is full of contradictions, deceptions, traps. Right now, we need a safe haven, somewhere to find our feet, catch our breath. Maybe this, the multicolored moon Io, is it. Those pretty colors, a molten rock, sulfur, volcanoes, spewing burning hot ash and sulfur hundreds of kilometers into the air. This is no safe haven. This is the most volatile place we've seen since the sun. Our magical journey to the edge of the universe is turning into a desperate flight. We've got to keep believing, hoping that amidst the dangers, there are wonders waiting to be discovered. Six hundred and fifty million kilometers from home. What a weird looking place. 